Good morning. You guys are well trained. I'm saying good morning to the online congregation coming online. I think I have everything turned on. Good morning to you all here today. Good to see the Winterston clan here today, now that I know who they are again. <laughs> um, yeah. So church council met this week, um, and Terry, I think, is just going to give some quick updates. Um, yeah, we're going to have... Oh, here, you gotta talk to just talking to that okay. thing. We're going to have harvest dinner October 5th. Um, 4.30 till 6.30 in the evening. So we're going to have a menu similar to what we had before and looking for some help if we people to come and help when we do that event. Um, uh, we, we also want to, the church council wants to encourage all people to help on the different committees uh, what we have. So we'll put a list of those committees so you know who's, who's kind of on the council for those. If you're willing to help, whether it be property, worship, or whatever committee, we would like to encourage active participation from members of the congregation. Um, and then, uh, I'm trying to think, what else? Looking at windows, yep. LED lights. Yep, we're looking at replacement of windows, getting some estimates on them. Our plan would be to look at if we were to replace these in the sanctuary in the office as one part of the plan, part one, and part two might be also replacing all the ones in the fellowship halls. Um, we're also looking at, there's a LED light bulb incentive, so we're looking at exploring that option as far as what that would cost, and, and there's some money that we can get from Focus on Energy. And then we're also continuing to look at to replace the chimes that were up on the roof of the church. So your feedback would be much appreciated as far as what you feel your, the priorities are. Um, just talk to any other church council members and let us know. So again, part of this dinner, first Wednesday in October, Clean up this one. Just trying to turn the technology off. Not mine, just this one. There it goes. Okay. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. And I invite you to find your hymnals for confession and forgiveness as found on page 94. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, Come to the help of your people. <clears throat> Turning us from our sins, live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We yes. have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> I invite you to join me in the prayer of the day. 
spot in your bullet. Let us pray. Oh God, mighty and mortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body, so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from Old Testament, Book of Deuteronomy, and here we're going to hear about the Sabbath. And remember, the descendants of Abraham were enslaved by the Pharaoh, and they needed to be set free. Now, the Sabbath, we might think, which is true, it does say that on the seventh day of creation, God rested. But another reason for Sabbath is given right here in Deuteronomy chapter 5. And I invite you to join me in this reading. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or daughter or your male or female slave, or your ox, or your donkey, or any of your livestock, or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The word of the Lord. I invite you to join me in Psalm 103, verses 108. <clears throat> Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord first vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and bound in his steadfast love. Our gospel today is from the 13th chapter of Luke. And remember, I'm very fond of saying that it's important to understand and know the beginnings and the ends of the gospels. And remember the first words of Jesus in Luke's Gospel. He gives his first sermon. He's in a synagogue in Nazareth. When he came to Nazareth, this is Luke chapter 4, when he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was Jesus' custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll, and Jesus read this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives. And now we will find in Luke chapter 13 that this is exactly what Jesus is doing in this story today. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Jesus heals a crippled woman. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and says, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately 
she stood up straight and began to praise God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on that day, not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered, you hypocrites. Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie and leave his ox or his donkey from the manger and leave it to give up water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound, who Satan bound for 18 years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When Jesus said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that Jesus was doing. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator, from Jesus Christ, God's only Son. Amen. Well, as we had Terry make announcements this morning, our church council met this Thursday. And one of the things I have truly come to appreciate over the last few years is even though we know how much church council business is pressing, that we begin each council session reading the gospel for the upcoming week. And all I ask, somebody reads it, and we then share a word or a phrase that you heard. Very simple. Did, what phrase, what did you hear? And then we invite everybody to share. And what people, council heard, majority heard, set free. Set free, and they rejoiced. Nobody, which is okay, nobody mentioned the Sabbath. Nobody heard or was upset or indignant about that synagogue leader. They heard about freedom. But this controversy in today's gospel lesson is between Jesus and a synagogue leader. And so many people, I mean clergy and commentaries, want to go there. They want to berate the synagogue leader. That, that, that's just where they want to go with it. But today, I'm really hearing this woman's story. 18 years. For 18 years, this woman could not stand up straight. Now, as a cross-country skier, and as a runner, they tell you, as soon as you start bending over, your head is like a bowling ball. It just pulls you down. I mean, not that I have that big a brain, I don't. But, like 12 pounds, right? It's a bowling ball on your head. Imagine 18 years, stooped over like that, all that weight. She could never look anybody in the eyes. What's the kind of thing we do when we want to get somebody's attention? You look them in the eye. She could not look people in the eye. Think how much we communicate non-verbally. We look in each other's eyes. She could not do that. And the community, likewise. They could only see the top of her head. They could only see the top of her head. I have a little bit of insight into that being five foot two, especially being in the military. There are often times, I don't think because of my gender, that I had to gain respect because they saw somebody five foot two, even though I never personally felt short. I know what it's like to be looked over. We're not going to make that mistake today. Jesus notices her. She came into the synagogue. She did not ask to be healed. She came to the synagogue.
Jesus simply notices her and announces, Woman, you are set free. You are set free. And then later, Jesus claims her, most importantly, as a daughter of Abraham, reminding her that she is a member of the covenant community as a daughter, as an heir, as somebody absolutely worth of love and dignity. Daughter of Abraham. Now, I know it's a long time ago, but let's go back two weeks in time to pop the fun days. And we talked about Genesis 15. And that in Genesis 15 is when God promised Abram that he was going to be the father of many descendants, as numerous as the stars. God showed Abram the sky. But Abram had a tough time trusting. He had no children yet. He and Sarah had no children. But still Abram trusted. And God renamed him Abraham. And that day at Poplar Fundays, we also said song. The song that says that God knows the name of every star. And if God knows the name of every star, and God said that your descendants, who we are descendants of Abraham, that God is going to know the name then of every descendant. And I'll say it once and I'll say it probably many more times. When I had that beloved time with Betty, it's one of the last things I told Betty. And I told her again about Abraham. And God knowing the names of every star. And Betty, God knows the name of you. Such precious time. God knows the name of every one of us. And so this is what I wonder now for that daughter of Abraham, this crippled woman. Clearly she was going to send God. She knew the Abraham story. They told all of those stories. She knew the story of Abraham. And the songs were the hymn book of the Jewish people at that time, the ancient Israelites. And nothing has changed. This is still the hymn book. It's the hymn book for us, the songs. And that is why in this congregation, we almost never not say the song. Even if many modern churches don't have time to say the song anymore, we will never give up saying the song. And the song that was assigned for today, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who heals all your diseases. Your youth is renewed like the eagles. We're starting to talk a lot about old age in this congregation. Your youth will be renewed like the eagles. So I must imagine, though, that this woman did not feel like a daughter of Abraham. But we know that Jesus did. Jesus saw her and named her. Jesus knows our names. We all need to be set free from something. It's been 18 days, 18 weeks, 18 years, maybe even longer than 18 years. We all need something that we need to be set free from. And it is God's purpose is always to set us free. Jesus is about freedom, about unbinding us from what holds us back, from what is holding us back, whether it be physical ailments, anxiety, mental, whatever it is, God's desire is to set us free. And that we clearly knew from the Deuteronomy when he heard his people cry who needed to be freed from their slavery. And God calls you and me to that same ministry, freeing others. Because the truth is, when any person rises, 
we're all inspired to stand a little straighter. And I had a wonderful conversation this morning with Jan. And maybe you guys didn't see this, and that's okay. But I'm like, Jan, Jan, did you watch the Packers football game Friday night? Jan had no idea why I was at her. And she's like, yeah, I sure did. And me, she says, do you see that 50 yard one, 51 yard run by the quarterback, Evelyn? I'm like, we'll say more, Jan. So, pregame, fourth quarter, Packers playing the Saints, pregame, nobody cares. Well, whatever. And they've got in for Green Bay this quarterback. He's not in the third string. He's trying out. He's trying to make any NFL team. I think we're his 16, even though he was a seventh round pick eight years ago. It's fourth quarter. They finally put him in. And he gets the ball, snap to him, and it's supposed to be a run play. It's third down. And he sees that the single safety in the back bit on the play. He was supposed to hand the ball off to Tyrone Williams, but he didn't. He kept it. And he went around the end, and he ran it in for 51 yards. And what was going on at this exact moment in, on the television is that the sidelines was interviewing Aaron Rodgers. They're interviewing him. And Aaron Rodgers is there all the shouting, and he picked around the reporter, and he, like, he sees Evelyn sprinting down the sidelines. And he gets to do the Lambo leap. And it's like he went over the top. It's like he almost wanted to crawl in with the crowd. We were all rejoicing with Evelyn. And Aaron Rodgers, they showed him later, I mean, when Evelyn got back in the sideline, I think Aaron Rodgers is still a little straighter. Aaron Rodgers has never run 30 yards in a single play. Evelyn did 51 and scored a touchdown. I mean, that where Rodgers scored a touchdown. And they keep playing that now in the quarterback room. At least 51 yard run. When any person rises, we're all inspired to stand straighter. If anybody rises. And that's why today we are not going to overlook, pun intended, we're not going to overlook the woman who could not stand up straight. And what did she do on that day of the Sabbath when she could stand up straight? She praised God. We are here today on the Sabbath, our Sabbath, and we are here to praise God. Amen. And we are also here today to hear the voice of Jesus call us. Our hymn today is hymn number 611. The hymn is, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. And Jan will sing the hymn 611, and then um, I invite you to keep playing as I say the prayers. For our online congregation, I will say, I heard the voice of Jesus say, and I invite you to respond with, Come to me. In 
and wisely to serve. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all languages, we pray with you and for Christians in worship all over the world. Make your church joyful to reflect the diversity of your people and the unity of your love. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come to me. Your spirit speaks in creation. We thank you for watered gardens, for abundant yield, for clean water, for sunlight, for communities where people and nature live in peace together. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come to me. Remove the yoke of destructive partisanship the pointing of the finger at our enemies, and bless nations in need. Empower all to speak the truth, encouraging honorable leadership. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come to me. You provide justice for all who are oppressed, and relief for all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, and physical distress. This day we especially pray for Blanche and Arlene, Alice, and Christy, and those we now name silently in our hearts, Diane. Assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come to me. Generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. I heard the voice of Jesus say,
Then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood, which I have given for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and let us pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. For thy kingdom come, for thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and we pray our sign of trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And that we will stop the temptation, but to the rest of the world, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When we eat this bread, we share the body of Christ. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Receive the benediction. So now we leave this space of worship, and while so much of the road ahead is uncertain, we know some things that are solid and sure as the ground beneath our feet and the sky above our heads. Jesus risen will bring in the kingdom. Be well in Christ. Christ is with you. And thanks be to God. Now, there's a test question. From today's service and everything you know about peace living, what is the song that we should put on the lips of the woman who could not stand up straight? What's her hymn? Lindy got it on the second guess because she thought it was too easy. Excellent choice, but no. <laughs> then you always have a good guess. So close. This is so simple. Think about a song that should be on that woman's lip. Think about the second verse. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. What's the second verse? Satan had me bound. The woman who was bound for 18 years by Satan. Jesus lifted her up. And what is so aggravating to me, we know this song here at Priest Luther. We sing this all the time. Lydia's favorite is going to be her funeral now. But there was not a single worship resource that recommended this song be sung today. I mean, this is the crippled woman's song. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me up. They don't know their funerals for so I invite you to stand and sing him 860. I'm so glad.